Hi, my name is Sjoerd, and thank you very much for joining this, uh, this presentation. I've been um, contributing to LVM for six years now, just over six years since I joined ARM, where I work on the um, Clang and LVM-based compilers. And today I want to introduce a new optimization called function specialization. First, I would like to um, sketch the context a little bit. Um, function specialization is a new interprocedural optimization, or IPO in short. And it's an LVM IR transformation pass or optimization. And at the moment, it's off by default. Um, its aim is to improve the runtime performance uh, of applications at the expense of compile time and code size. And they are very important things. So we'll be talking about that later. Um, what we'd like to achieve is to improve um, the spec benchmark, that's a CPU benchmark, and the MCF application in particular of that. But it's, it's, it's a very generic general um, um, optimization. So it triggers in quite a lot of code bases, actually, in the LVM test suite, in states, two builds, and a lot more code, ba code bases. Um, GCC has this enabled by default at optimization level 03. And so this uh, actually uh, regularly comes up as a difference between Clang and, LC and, um, and, and GCC. So we're missing out on something. Um, the pass has actually been uh, committed three, four months ago, and it lives it, at this place there in libtransforms IPO function specialization.cpp. And it was based on previous work done quite a while ago by Matthew Simpson. Now, function specialization, let's look at a mo motivating example, um, a code example. On the left, you see four functions, foo, compute, plus, and minus. And when we start looking at foo, we see that it invokes compute. Um, either with uh, values x and plus, or with x and minus. Uh, value x is not really important here. The plus and the minus are more interesting. They are, um, they are functions. So when we look at function compute, we see that it takes as the second argument a function pointer. And compute kind of dereferences that or calls it so that we end up calling plus or minus. Now, when we look at this again, we see actually quite a lot of function calls. So function foo calls uh, compute, which calls plus and or minus. So the observation is that there's quite a lot of uh, calls and indirect calls going on. And the question is, can we optimize this? Can we promote indirect calls to direct calls? And yes, we can. The solution is we can do this with function specialization. And the approach roughly is that we look at functions, compute in this case, and its arguments. What we'd like to do is propagate constant arguments down to its function body. And constant arguments in this case uh, can be constant globals or functions. And for this example, that is, um, uh, they are functions. So the plus or the minus function. So let's apply function specialization to this, to this example. On the left is the same input and on the right is the output. So it's the output of applying function specialization on the compute function. And we specialize on the constant argument bin op binary operation. So what we do is we, we copy compute. So we create two versions, which you see on the right-hand side, a compute.1 version and compute.2. Compute1 has the plus propagated down to his body. So you see the plus invocation there. And similarly, compute2 now directly calls minus. And looking at um, foo, um, that has its call size fixed up. So we now either call compute.1 or compute.2. So the result of this is that we have gotten rid of some um, indirect calls here. Compute1 and Compute2 now directly call plus, and we don't need to pass the argument. So that's, um, that's an optimization. Um, for this particular case, though, it's not the end of the optimization story. Um, because what we would like to achieve here in the end is just to return x plus 1 or x minus 1. And in this case, we achieve this by function specialization because that actually enables further uh, optimizations, in this case, inlining. So if this is about inlining, then one observation or question is, is this not a very roundabout way of doing inlining? Um, yes, maybe that is the case, but it's kind of by design. The inline, inliner by itself is not able to do this. And so we use function specialization to do this. Um, therefore, function specialization is run just before the inliner in the optimization pipeline. Otherwise we would be only, otherwise we only benefit from constant passing, which is another kind of valid use case for um, um, function specialization, but we have not looked at it yet. So a little bit about inlining versus function specialization. Um, if this is about inlining, then um, a valid question is, should we not be looking at, inli um, um, at inlining to implement this? 
yeah maybe um, but there are a few uh, disadvantages for example inlining heuristics are already difficult and specialization would require a whole new infrastructure on on top of that function specialization on the other hand is a relatively straightforward path to implement it is essentially about duplicating code and fixing up uh, call sites and again gcc has this um, has this uh, enabled at o3 so if they can do it and the other thing about uh, function specialization is that, as I mentioned before, it uh, supports different use cases. So I've, sh I've shown a, an example where it uh, enables further inlining. But as I mentioned, uh, it could also help with propagating integer constants. You can think, uh, for example, about a function taking a integer value that is used as, as an upper bound in a, in a loop um, so that we get, could get a constant there. The disadvantage of function specialization is perhaps increased compile times and code size uh, compared to um, uh, inlining. And uh, increased compile times and code size are are very are going to be crucial for this. And to con control this, we have there is a cost model, a so-called goal-oriented heuristic. And what it does, it estimates if replacing an argument with a constant value would result in opportunity optimization opportunities. So what we do is we calculate a bonus um, if we would like to specialize, specialize on an argument and we calculate the cost for specializing a function. If the bonus is bigger than the, the cost, then it's profitable and we would like to specialize. Um, very briefly, just to give you an, imp an impression, um, the cost of specializing fun a function is calculated by looking at all instructions of that function multiplied by the cost of that instruction multiplied by the number of functions we have specialized at that point. So the more we specialize, the more costly it becomes. And the bonus of specializing an argument is, is calculated by looking at all uses of the, uh, of the arguments, the instructions, scaled by the loop net test. Um, so um, if a, an instruction appears in a loop nest, it's, it's, the, the idea is that it's more beneficial to, to specialize because it's invoked more. So in that way, we try to, uh, so this is in a nutshell, the cost model and is the way to kind of control compile times and code size explosion. Um, on this slide, we show some, um, some initial compile time results using the CT mark um, benchmark. That is a sub suite of the LVM um, test suite. Um, these results are obtained using the LVM compile time tracker. Um, one of the observations of the uh, LVM compile time tracker is that measuring compile times by looking at the wall clock time can be noisy. So instead, it looks at the retired numbers of instru instructions as a proxy for compile times. And the compile time tracker um, measures compile times uh, for, for different configurations, O3, LTO, uh, thin LTO, LTO, and O0. Uh, here on the left in the table, you, you, you see the results for O3, and they're very similar to, to LTO. And so the first column shows the different applications in this benchmark. The second column shows the, the percentage increase of build times. And the third column shows the number of functions specialized. So you see that only two functions were specialized for the application CLAM AV at the cost of a 0.4% uh, build time increase. Um, the other observation is that it, um, if it doesn't trigger, the, um, the compile time increase is, is, is quite high. And that surprises me, and um, I, I was not expecting that. So that needs a little bit looking into. Um, the fourth column, uh, forced, is a bit unrelated to this, but I just wanted to show the potential function specialization. This is forcing um, specialization, so it's avoiding the cost model. And then you see that quite a lot of functions are, are specialized. This is just to show that there's quite a lot of potential and also shows that the cost model is really um, restrictive. Keeping, keeping the number of functions special, specialized really, really low. Um, sometimes looking at wall clock times can be stable, um, especially for, for uh, compile time jobs that look longer. Examples are the Clang, Stage 2 Build, and SQL Lite. Uh, roughly three functions are specialized, and I didn't find any compile time increase. MCF, our mo motivating example, is slightly different. Um, we see a 20% compile time increase for a 10% uplift, and there the impact is really large. So the observation is that um, actually very little time is spent in the pass itself in function specialization. I think it's just due that the backend processes more functions and instructions. And yeah, the, there's a bigger impact on smaller compile time jobs and less on, on bigger ones. 
future work, we would like to get reach parity with GCC. So we'd like to get this enabled by default and it probably requires a little bit more work. Uh, thin LTO is not supported. And again, the cost model is very important. Uh, constant integers are supported, but not enabled by default. Um, we only um, specialize one argument and we're not caching any analysis results. So there's some work to be done here. And I quite like one suggestion that was made during the review process is that we could introduce an attribute or pragma to explicitly request specialization. So that's something we will be working on. Um, any feedback is welcome. So please drop a message on the LVM mailing list on Fabricate or a direct email if you have any thoughts or comments on this. Thank you very much.